right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, special guest, Fulton Titans volleyball coach, Ashley Preston with me, HBCU grad, and she coached here at Spelman in the AUC, down the street from where I be at. What it is, Ashley, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. Tell me what it is. How's the weather in Fulton, Fulton, California today? Is it sunny and 75 as always is? Uh, yes. Uh, I live in Long Beach, actually, but yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I can't complain. I live across the street from the beach, so i um, going to take a nice long walk after this to, you know, decompress, so <laughs> yeah. Yes, so let me ask you, Ashley, you, I read your bio, you was a former basketball player, so tell me this, how do you go from basketball to being followed by a coach getting digs, with the Roman rebounds, you're getting digs now. Well, no, you could dig in the post and hit the post, man, but you know how that is. Now you're digging in volleyball. Tell me, how'd you go from that, being in Vegas, to a volleyball player? Tell us all about your journey in that regard. Yeah, actually. I've always wanted to play basketball because my grandfather played for John Wooden um, at UCLA. So I wore his number, too, while I played. And just it was something that I was always um, interested in. And then... I just happened to be talking to a friend, Kiki Lindo. I'll never forget this. I was talking to a friend and I was like, where are you going? And she's like, oh, I'm going to volleyball practice, like tryouts. And I was like, oh, you mean that sport where they wear the little short shorts? Like, I'm not wearing that. I wear basketball shorts. And she's like, Ashley, you can wear your basketball shorts. You can wear your basketball shoes. Just come with me and try out. And I tried out. I made, uh, this was in the 10th grade. I made JV at Durango High School. And then towards the end of the season, uh, Bob Kelly, who I owe my whole career, uh, volleyball career to, Bob Kelly asked me if I wanted to move up to varsity because um, he saw something in me. And so went for varsity, uh, got on the team, uh, played the volley club volleyball circuit uh, with Nevada Juniors. And then from there, I got a I was actually just going to go to San Diego State and try to walk on because I always wanted to go to school in California, being from Vegas, and my family grew up in um, California. But I was like, I'll be a walk on at San Diego State. But then Coach Bozier, Ramona Riley Bozier, called and had this opportunity for me to get a scholarship and then also academic money to suffice the full scholarship. And I was so reluctant to go. I was even like, HBCU? What? All Black people? No. Like, my, you see my friends, my friends are all multicultural. Like, no, like it's just different for people who grew up in the West Coast and their thought process about HBCU. I went on a visit um, and my mom, she is a single mother. And so she was so worried about me getting loans as it relates to going to San Diego oh, State. Yes. So for her, I made the decision to go to, to Morgan State University. So, and from there I was a libero. I was the starting libero and now hold records <laughs> still to this day and one of the top 50 players in the MEAC in history. So, um, so yeah, and then from there, uh, Coach Bozier, I wanted to stay for a boy. Let's, let's be clear, let's be honest. Okay. I had a boyfriend in college. Uh, and so I couldn't tell my grandfather I'm staying for a boy. So I had to strategize. So I asked Coach Bozier, like, hey coach, could I possibly be your GA after I graduate? And she thought about it and she's like, I think you could be my assistant. And so I was her full-time assistant for two years. And also I got my master's during that time because my mom encouraged me to. So I got tuition remission um, through Morgan State. So I actually have a master's in publication design um, from the University of Baltimore. So, and then, yeah. And then from there, Coach Bozier kicked me out of the nest. Um, and so I was the assistant coach at Loyola Maryland University, at, um, of course, in Baltimore. And I appreciate my mom so much because that actually was a pay cut. I went from making $28,000 to $15,000 and it was part-time. And I asked my mom if she could possibly help me with my dream. And she always wants us to pursue our dreams. So I'm so grateful for Gail Preston. So yeah, I coached there and actually had an interview, a couple of SWAC HBCUs and for a head coach. And they all told me like, yeah, you're just too young and not enough wow. experience. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make sure nobody ever says that. Um, so I took a leap of faith and went to Atlanta, Georgia um, to be Spelman College head volleyball coach. So, 
So that was my first head coaching gig. And also I was the sports information director too. So I had to write wow, my the, 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 the double gig, the dual gig. I see you working. I'm going to write my story and coach at the same time. And coach at the same time. And then also drive this big old bus. Like I was like going like this with the bus. It was crazy. Like I was like, man, I put in work. But, but yeah, then once Spellman said that they were ending athletics, I applied for Coppin State University and received that job. And that's really what got me to, to Fullerton. Coffin State is one of the places that I'll always be grateful for. Um, and it really, it showed me a lot too about the city of Baltimore. Like going to college there, of course, is different than actually being there and being in it. And I love West Baltimore. Um, I love the people in West Baltimore. It's, it's such an amazing community. Um, that doesn't get that recognition that they deserve and they love their community. And so I'm so grateful because that showed me systemic uh, racism that I've never seen before. And I understood why uh, young men and women make the decisions that they do. Whereas if I would have stayed on the West Coast, I still would have had that thought process of like, well, they know right from wrong. Like, it's not that hard, but also I'm looking from a lens of being black middle class. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yes. as opposed to being entrenched in it and really understanding like you have no other way out or you believe, you know what I mean? You truly oh, yes. have no other way it's out. survival at that point. Survival, yeah. So, so yeah, and then I just applied. I applied to Fullerton and I thought, I was like, man, I'm not going to get this job. Like, they're not going to hire my little, my little self, you know, and went on the interview and just honestly was my authentic self because I said I had nothing to lose. And my Most boss, definitely. my boss, he, he is uh, an amazing man as it relates to, to thinking outside of the box at times. And I was that outside of the box hire. <laughs> and yeah, I've been here now for six years. So been a tough road. You saw my record here. <laughs> been, a, been a tough road, but a long journey of learning. Yes. The main thing is they stuck by you because, you know, in college athletics, the problem is the administration going to stick by you. They'll cut you out three or three or four years, you yeah. know. So, so I mean, to be there as long as you have, I'm like, hey, yeah, he's definitely giving you opportunity to go up, build a program the right way because some, some ADs, you ain't winning in a few years, you out of. And yeah. they, don't, they don't realize that, that that cycle over and over again, you don't have any continuity. So you're always going to be in that same spot again every three or four years. Yeah. Exactly. I really do appreciate the, how much they have supported me here um, and helped me grow and learn. And also I've helped them grow and learn to see what a, a coach of color too needs, to see what a young coach needs, you know what I mean? And, and those managerial skills that we don't get taught um, at times at smaller schools and things like that. And the politics, I had to learn politics on the fly. And woo, when I tell you I've messed up, sometimes I have messed up, but it's, it's, it's you learning from your mess ups and so that you don't make the same mistake again, you know? So um, yeah, it's been a journey. And I, I look back and smile because in it, I was like, woo, I am in the storm. But once you walk through the storm and see it, all you see is clouds and rainbows and sunshine. So I'm glad I overcame the storm. So. Hey, man, I, I'm with you, Ashley. I've had to, I have to learn politics, too, in radio. I had to learn mm -hmm. it, too. And, you know, my natural self is, is, is to curse somebody out. I had to learn, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that all the time. You can't do that all the time. No. <laughs> 10 seconds. Take 10 seconds. Breathe in. Breathe in. <laughs> I guess like, hey, pause. Let's not go with the West Side of Atlanta, JR. Let's not go with, go with that. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. We got we to gotta check ourselves sometimes. Like, hey, Let's like, use Box Tennessee State Education. Then I will get to Tennessee State and use more uh, common words. <laughs> More right. tactful words for a second. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I, I love it. So let me ask you, Ash, like you said, going from HBCU, living in the in Vegas. So tell me about that experience for you. For me, I feel at home as HBCUs. I feel at home. I'm around people I'm I'm used to the who understands about my, my my where I came from. For you, it was like total, total opposites. How was it trying to get people to learn you being from <laughs> the West Coast in Vegas, the desert, and to, to Baltimore, where's Bay Baltimore City is a heck of a place. Yeah. So how was that for you? And how was that for people? People I have to say, hey, she's a cool girl. Let me learn more about the West Coast. So how was that yeah. for you? Yeah, um, it was funny because when I went uh, on my visit, 
like you got to understand I grew up and it's not normal to see a lot of black people right Mm -hmm. and so when I uh my grandfather's from Atlanta Georgia by the way so shout out to ATL so my grandfather's from Atlanta um but going there I was like wait there's all black people at working at Starbucks wait they're all working at target and it's so such a (laughs) weird racial culture shock for a person um like me coming from the west and um how they adjusted to me i'm just like i said i'm goofy and i'm personable so they just thought like look at this valley girl type thing so it was always funny um the adjustment helped because one of my closest friends she was from Colorado. So we went through it together type thing. So um, that helped too. Coach Mosier did a good job as it relates to roommates. Um, And then, yeah, it's just me being me. So I made sure like, I knew every time I stood up and say, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, of course people, Vegas? I don't know anyone from Las Vegas, Nevada. And so that's what started conversations the moment I say where I'm from, you know? So And it was fun getting to know, like learning African diaspora. Like I had no awareness of just the the dispersed Africans everywhere. Like New York accents. I love New York accents. Uh, I love um, Baltimore club music. I love go-go. Like those things now that I would have never been entrenched in. And we can't even talk about trap. I love that when I lived in Atlanta, y'all had five radio stations of trap. You know, I don't even get one of hip hop. Like, and if if it's hip hop here, it's like pop hip hop. You know what I mean? And they just doing something. And I'm like, no, you have no idea. So, so yeah, just being able to, I love learning from people. And then, yes, like you said, then people learn from me. Like, where do you live in Vegas? Like you live on the strip? I'm like, no, we don't live (laughs) on the strip and stuff like that. Oh, yes. And you, like you said, like going to Nashville was like, for me, Nashville was like a, a big, small town for me like I'm like this is small like it's like I'm not used to everybody doing everybody you know <laughs> I'm not used to that but it's like you know it was fun though for me it's I came out of trouble because Nashville I ain't get too much trouble in Nashville I go home to Atlanta I'm gonna be in the streets I'm, yeah. gonna, be, I'm, gonna, be, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a part of the city I can't take so much people with me I can't take you this part of town with me if I take you to right. like so you know like you know so for me it's like you know like you said it was, taught me a lot you know for me it made me become more reserved because I, because I, I know I was when I was younger, I was belligerent. I wouldn't take certain things from certain people. So getting it from people who look like me, I was like, okay, cool. And then knowing it, go two miles over to Vanderbilt was like, whoa, West End, like wow, the world changed in two miles. <laughs> right, right, exactly, right. You know, like <laughs> wow, so. Getting that shock as well for me was different because I was always staying around the AUC. I was always over in that area. I didn't really venture off too far. I didn't go, I really didn't go to Buckhead per se or go to Alpharetta. I was more so on the, the North Side Drive area, North Atlanta area, or South Atlanta. I wasn't really going on off the Buckhead and Alpharetta. I go in Decatur. You know what I'm saying? So for me, in that experience, like, okay, a little different. Now I know how to go to Buckhead and Alpharetta in Nashville. I can, I can deal with, I can deal with it now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and the MEAC was fun. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, the school, tell us about the rivals in the MEAC, you know, playing Hampton when they was in the conference, you know, you, you know, you got to deal with the Eastern Shore as well and all the you know, Central and SC State and A&C. Now, tell us about those rivals you all had playing those, those different teams. Yeah, our biggest rivalry was um, for us when we played, when Morgan, when I played at Morgan, it was, I believe, I'm trying to think. Fam, of course, everyone's trying to beat Fam. And then Howard, because, oh, Howard, the H U, you know, I have to hear that from two different. Oh, yes. It's very, <laughs> two different sometimes schools. Very, it's very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love that they love their schools, but however, uh, Morgan State is the best. But, but yeah, so that was fun. And then it was funny because then when I coached at Coppin, right, um, how I had to shift my mindset to now not beating Coppin, but telling Coppin to beat Morgan. And you better not lose to Morgan. Whereas we were told at Morgan, you better not lose to Coppin. So that became a little small rivalry because I coached against my coach, you know? Mm -hmm. The players knew, some of the players knew of me. And then, of course, everybody knows Ramona riley Bozier. She's been there for 33 years, you know? So it was fun to see that dynamic. And plus, um, 
I, when I coached at Coppin, I love having fans there. So we played actually in the smaller gym in the arena of Coppin. And I love that because that's, in high school, we played in the back gym. We didn't play in the front gym. Bob hated the front gym. So we played in the back. So that's how I know to play. So I would pack the little gym with like as many people as I could, like 300 people during the Morgan game. I used to give out free t-shirts to all fans. And it was just so much fun for my young women at the time, cause we were winning. And it was just so much fun to see that, that joy at Coppin and, and stuff like that. So, and then, yeah, and then we had this thing, I have to shout them out, the uh, Coppin State Turnup Squad, who were a group of baseball players and some of the, the volleyball players' friends. When I tell you they were the most live group ever, it was the best, like, and uh, we got them their own shirts that said Turn Up Squad. I designed them and stuff because I love designing and giving my players cool gear and stuff like that. So it was really fun experience to have to create that kind of rivalry, you know, with West Baltimore and East Baltimore. Oh, yes, most definitely. And I could tell you using your degree very well. You can come up with different kind of themes and terminology, different sayings. So that degree is coming in handy for you, Ashley. I see it working for you. <laughs> I see it working for you, you know. I can say, I, can say, you know, I, I definitely said, man, she used that degree good. I see you. T- <laughs> tighten up. I see you working, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I see you. Hey, I see that SID working. I see that communication. I see that. I see it working now. Yep. I see, I see the you. Titan culture, you know what I mean? Putting that on the shirt and the seeing code. The I, I like the code. Oh, talks the about, code, yeah. That's about the code. Oh. I mean, the code. I like the code. The code is nice, though. You know, I might just on these this code for, for my staff. This is, we got a code now. This is, yep. <laughs> this is about the secret. code you got, yeah. Ashley. Uh, I needed something in 2019. Um, I overhauled myself as a leader. Uh, I needed to check myself and what direction I wanted to go with Fullerton. Like that was like the starting moment of the the growth of me as a head coach. And then also too, I wanted to change the culture with the team. And so I brought in my team leaders and well, we designated team leaders finally and I taught them how to lead. And so I was like, what do you wanna see changed, right? And so we talked about it and they were like, well, we want people to go to class. And I was like, okay, so you want people to be responsible. Um, They said they didn't want clicks in the group. So they want people to be relational, you know? And then they said that they, when they have conversations with people, they, they want to have some semblance of respect. Like each person leaves with respect. And I was like, okay, so let's call it respectful and let's call it the code. And really ultimately what you want to do is be your sister's keeper. Now be your sister's keeper is a play from my brother's keeper from <laughs> a certain movie that we all know. <laughs> no doubt. And, or the Bible, it is in the Bible too, but just having that and really seeing my players take it as a life of its own, and that's what we call it, the code. So if you break the code and those three core values, well, technically four, if you're not your sister's keeper, then there's rules in place for what happens with that. And it just holds us all accountable And it helped so much during the pandemic of being your sister's keeper. And on our Instagram, they asked each of our player what it means to them. And just to read what it means, it's beautiful. During the protests, all of that, everything came down to being your sister's keeper and being relational, responsible, respectful, regardless of what you look like, regardless of where you come from, you can still be your sister's keeper and say, I see you, I support you, you matter. And those are my biggest words to my players. And... Yeah, I adore my young women. They're the best. Like, they're such Gs and they work hard on the court and in the classroom and just continue to see the fruits of their labor. You know what I mean? In 2019, we all did that culture overhaul and to see it, then we have the best record since 2012, you know? And to see it for, that was so gratifying for me too, to be seen from my colleagues of my program doing better of being co-coach of the year with Robin Almo, who is an Olympian. And she's like amazing coach and to, to be garnered that with her and for her to text me and be like, dude, you deserve that. Like, wait, what? Like, (laughs) that's all you, you're top 10 in the nation. Are you crazy? And she's like, we both are building programs and I appreciate that. So, so yeah, the code, I love it. I'll got to get you a shirt. I'll send you a shirt. Please do. I'll wear that to my staff meeting. I'll say, now I'll edit the code, say, hey, the third thing, you fired. <laughs> it's going to be, you fired. <laughs> so, but I love 
me he gave me some ideas. Okay, yeah. Talk to JR. Talk to JR again. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, it tell me this. So for what is the ideal young woman for your program, Fullerton, that you got to recruit for and go out, go after, bring in to play for those Titans out there in the Big West? Yeah. Oh, ideal young women. Interesting. Um, you got to have bounce. I joke and say that. So vertical, right? So I call it bounce. Um, a young woman who who aspires to be more than just a volleyball player. So I like the, the all around. I like you. I love asking the question, like, what's a cause that you, that's important to you and how are you serving that cause? Um, I care about self-care um, when it comes to talking to athletes. I ask more intentional questions and just like, what's your vertical? How hard do you hit? Um, you know, and things like that, because you can get a very talented player to come and disrupt your culture. So I need to Amen. know, <laughs> I need to know, uh, how resilient are you? How do you push back? How, how do you like being talked to? Um, as it relates to, I love hearing, I'm a perfectionist. Oh, perfectionists are great. Same because, here. <laughs> because with, if you are so aspiring to perfection, what happens when that doesn't come? Like what, what, what does a bad day look like for you? You know, and those questions, it's, it's tough. We're in Southern California and at times it feels like we are someone's second choice. You know what I mean? So we liked being liked just as much. So us as a coaching staff will respond to kids who reach out to us and be like, I'm really interested in your program. We take more of a look at that kid as opposed to like begging someone what we won't do anymore. Cause that's what I did in the past <laughs> when I didn't have culture. I was begging, you know, or they come to Fullerton because we're 45 minutes away from California and uh, 25 minutes away from two beaches. They're coming for that and not for <laughs> to play volleyball at Fullerton. So just being really more intentional about the questions I ask once I get over the like, oh, she can jump high and hit hard, you know being more intentional with those questions. Most most definitely, because like, like you said, culture is everything. If a kid wants to really be there and be about the culture and grow, because you want to have a kid that really wants to represent your program for what it is. Yeah. Not for their future aspirations or whatever, whatever they may be. Because that would tank your program like no other. And trust me, I know how that works firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it happen too many times. Yeah. <laughs> So having the right mindset is what you need always for a good program. So I, I, I'm with you there, Ashley. That's great. Mm -hmm. And so this summer, you can actually have get the, get the girls work out on campus. Last year, with the COVID restrictions, now Georgia never closed, as you probably know. California went, 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 went with that. You, you all were shut down. So okay. having the, the young women on campus this summer to work out and get stronger and, and grow and develop in their game, how's it going to be for you and your staff here, knowing that you can actually work with them this summer? Well, it's great. Actually, volleyball can't work with them over the summer. Oh, you um, can't? Okay. Yeah, yeah, due to summer access. Yeah, you talk about basketball stuff. Hey, help me change that rule. If you could help me change the rule so that volleyball can uh, coach in the summer, I I'd appreciate that. Hey, but I, I, trust me, I'll do that. I know, I know, I know, I know I guess people I know. I, I can get that done. I can just be hey, look at this for me, please. <laughs> or I will bang the drum even loud on this show. Bang the drum until you need to get this done. Yeah. But it would be so great to see um, if they choose, like have have them come in uh, to do weights. And they usually at times, our gym is available. So they'll go in and utilize the gym when we're not there, you know, um, and just the ability to do it, I think is that's that's what's the best thing. Because yes, we were completely shut down, like could do nothing, could not be at Fullerton at all. So to be able to have that access, to be able to have two of our Texas players get to live on campus in the summer and take classes, you know, that'll help so much with when we all come back together in August with that chemistry and stuff like that. Because volleyball is different. We don't practice all summer. And then we literally have two weeks to prepare a team to play. Wow. Like, yeah, so it's, and then the development comes in the spring, and then, once again, we take a two-month break, so we do development, <laughs> individual development, and then the players leave, so it's, it's a tough, 
interesting thing that we're all just used to, but I think we're now more and more seeing how people are like, hey, maybe we should take a look at this. Maybe we should have summer access a little bit like football does. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not asking for the whole summer, but maybe potentially- At least a, a session or a quarter. At least a session, exactly. Like at least a session so we can get some type of rhythm in. Cause two weeks- you You're starting are off cold. Culture. Yeah, yeah. And it's the honor system. Are they really working out? Are they really doing? Then you got to figure who's in shape, who's not in shape. You got to yeah. get in shape during games. You lose sets because people aren't in shape. Or, or this, injuries. Injuries, like, yeah. yes. Because mm -hmm. I, I know how it is for me. And I took a few days off shooting, shooting the basketball. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, this ain't good. I need to <laughs> get, I need to keep this going more and more and more and more here. I'll mean, be tripping. See, I have right. a court in my backyard here, so. Oh, okay, got you. <laughs> yeah, I got a court here in, in Henry County out here. See, right, y'all, y'all, y'all able to do that. You got land. Long, <laughs> Long Beach ain't got no land. I, I don't have land in this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I get in the court. Like, oh man, my. I'm, I'm being in the 30s, I'm like, Lord, I, I'm not in my 20s no more. Not, I'm, I, I can't just go out and do this no more. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you before you get let me close out here. Tell me, is what, what was your favorite time being here in Atlanta? The city that I, I, your grandfather grew up was from, and you, you, what city that I love, of course, being from down here. Tell me, what's your favorite, what's your favorite memories of being down here? Favorite memories are, of course, hanging out with my friends. I just went back, actually, and... I went to this place, Pin and Proper. Have you okay. heard of it? Uh, I, yeah, I heard of it, yes. Yes, and went foaling. I'm like, this is such, I felt like, I'm like, this is such a University of Georgia, like, frat game. Like, I'm throwing footballs at bowling pins, and it was so much fun. So um, that, of course, uh, eating. Uh, I gained a lot of weight when I used to live <laughs> in Atlanta. I lived in Camp Creek. So I live next to every single eatery. Oh, yes. Yeah, where the U-Bar is. Yeah, where the U-Bar <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Old Lady Gang, I just went there to the one in Camp Creek. That was yes. Like, yes. Um, of course, I enjoyed, uh, I just enjoy being around just Black people of excellence. And it's so normalized. And you just are. And you just get to be you. That's why I love the show Atlanta. Because when I watch that show, I crack up and call my friend in Atlanta. I was like, this is so Atlanta. This is like, he did, such, Donald Glover did such a great job with that show. Because I'm just like, he didn't do the, the high profile things that you see in the, the hip hop videos, right? Oh, it was yes. so it, it was so just entrenched in what Georgia is and what Atlanta is. And so I loved it. But um, of course, it, uh, Small Cakes is my favorite cupcake spot. Um, there and yeah like I had so much fun in a year that I lived there and I know if I didn't leave to pursue this opportunity I'd be having a big a big old house like you with a volleyball court in the backyard <laughs> and a basketball court on the side so um, yeah. I love Atlanta it's always gonna have my heart too it's it's one of those places I know I'm gonna I'm, I know I'm gonna venture back one day and live in Atlanta yeah, maybe, maybe I'm still doing radio. They threw on the radio. Yeah, you can still come on my radio show. <laughs> You'd be, be like a co-host if they ain't yeah. throw on the radio yet. <laughs> I've been this 10 years. Okay, but 10 more in me, hopefully. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 10 more attended. Keep on going for 10 more years. So we'll see yeah. what we got going. And so you from Vegas. So you happen to have the radios out there now, and now they got the – the hockey team as well. So did you ever think Vegas had pro sports to what they, what they do right now? Did you, ever, did you ever see that happen when you was a kid? No, I never saw that. And it's so funny. That's why, you know, growing up, I was never tied to a team because I'm like, we bet on everybody. So, <laughs> so yeah, but it's, it's so funny. My uncle played for the Raiders. So to see it now be the Las Vegas Raiders is kind of, is interesting, right? But it makes sense. I know they're making a lot of money doing that too. So, cause you got the LA people now being able to drive um, there to see them and everything like that. I think it's great. The, um, the hockey team has done an amazing job and it was so, I was here, you know, while it started. So my friends, watching my friends get so invested <laughs> in hockey and I'm like, y'all, it's hockey. And they're like, no, you don't understand, Ashley. It's a movement. And I was like, okay. So I love that they were really good right away for, Mo for Vegas, you know? Most so. definitely. T-Mobile Arena is a nice place. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? NBA team, you got an NBA team coming here real soon. 
because they're gonna expand to Seattle and Vegas. So you have three sport pro teams in Vegas. So wow, okay, yeah. got you. So got you have the NBA team in Vegas playing at T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, okay, and that probably makes twenty twenty four. So. Look, look, you telling me street. some info, inside info. You telling yes, me some inside info. Yes, yes, it's coming. <laughs> Trust and believe it's coming. Seattle has new arena coming up in Seattle. Vegas got some up arena. They're going to move Memphis to the Eastern Conference. So the Memphis Grizzlies will be in the East now. Got you. Wow. They should be. They shouldn't be out there. They should no be. Way. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah, that, that's some NBA inside events right there for you here on the Boss Man Show on your radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Yes. Well, Ashley, it's been fun to chat with you today. This is fun. You know, go enjoy that beach. It's 84 degrees here and humid and muggy. But oh, oh, I don't miss that. I don't miss the humidity. I don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was near some a beach right now to go. Uh, I can't swim, but I go out in the water halfway and run back when the, when the waves go back. So, you know, I can't Yeah. Like, like, yeah. You know, but but from the hood cannot swim. We can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> we just. Go enjoy the water and hope we don't drown. <laughs> you know, so yes, indeed. Well, you have a great day. This was very fun. This again real soon. I'll be definitely supporting your team and look, making sure you guys win. I'll make sure I promote and support volleyball and getting you that access you want. I'm gonna make sure I throw it out there some more. Bang Thank that drum you for so you. Much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. This was fun. All right. Have a great day. You too now. Bye. Bye.